it's Cinnamon Coney or Art Sherpa. And if you are on all platforms, you just saw me go live on Periscope, but right now I'm on YouTube. <laughs> we almost had Sherpa Inception there for a minute if I haven't signed off quickly enough. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this fabulous rainbow rose. We're going to be using a very simple acrylic palette. I'm going to show you every step of the painting. If you check the description below, you're going to see links to the materials. You're going to also see a link to a traceable reference photo. You're welcome to download and print that out and use the traceable to transfer the image on because it's kind of a complicated shape. And also to print out your own reference photo for personal use. Um, also, you'll see some new links to the brushes, which I will update as I go right after the show. But that will let you know exactly like everything you need to know about them and where to get them. And it's a much easier tool with mapping. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And so he is going to be reading the questions because I get distracted. I am told by reading the questions. I just like stop teaching and I just read the chat. So he reads it, lets me know if you guys have a question during the live so I can help you. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do this acrylic painting today. It's going to be simple. We're going to have picture in picture over here. I think I'm pointing the right way. See? No. Anyway. So you don't have to like imagine what a rose would look like in your head. And let's just talk about the materials and hop on in. This is an 11 by 14 canvas board, and I pre-sketched on it with watercolor pencil my rose design. I did freehand this in. It was a journey. Um, interesting side point, I have a, a mild dyslexia. It usually only hits me with numbers, but it also hits me on roses. The building of concentric patterns going outward or inward, depending on your point of view, can become very challenging for me to see. So if you find that is your experience, that might be what's going on. We have the wishes. Uh, Susan is wishing for her family, uh, just like a lot of love and support to help them get through a tragedy. Um, in our own community, uh, we have Brittany who has hurt her wrist and arm. She's got a bit of a fracture and we're wishing for healing and recovery. And then of course, as we will be wishing a bunch, we have for St. Jude's to get St. Jude to get all the help and support that it needs globally to do its amazing work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get the acrylic palette going. Uber simple today. I got cad red light. I have cad yellow medium. I have quinacridone magenta. This paint here that looks black is actually dioxinine purple or sometimes called dox purple. I have phthalo blue, phthalo green, titanium white, and golden, golden's acrylic glazing liquid, which slows the drying time down and lets me glaze. Now, this used to be the old packaging. And then they updated it here. See how this looks? Mm -hmm. And now they've updated it here. Same product. <laughs> so now you know what all three of them look like. And that's going to help me blend and keep my paint from drying out on me too quickly. Um, a little thought on what you're doing with roses. Um, one, think about the direction that the petal grows. And that's going to mm -hmm. be the brush stroke direction that you have. So you're going to try to brush the direction of the petal growth. We're going to remember that the rose is a bowl shape, right? Rose flowers are bowl shapes. Even though they're very complicated, they're essentially a bowl. And the petals create shadows in the depth. So as long as you get those base values of the shadow to the highlight, your rose is going to look fairly rose-like and realistic. I'm pretty excited to show you how to do this rainbow rose because I think everybody loves... I mean, who doesn't love that, like, I cut this thing up and then it sucks up the different liquids and I dye the pellet. It never works for me at home. I have to buy them. <laughs> but I always try it. How's everybody doing today? Dude, everybody's doing really good here. We have a really big crowd here today. <sighs> it's Sunday. It's Sunday fun day. Sunday. Sundays are always wonderful. And, and everyone, you know, it's so wonderful that we get to get together with everyone and, and, and do this painting thing. This painting thing. Yeah. Painting thing. I'm going to start in the small area, so I'm going to do my number four cat's tongue. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to take this water jug, and I'm going to drag off the extra water. This is not a hummingbird feeder. This is an experimental water jug by the paint punk guys, and I'm into it. It's not available on the market yet, but I hope it will be soon. <laughs> it is a very cool little toy. It is very cool. So See, when, we look, behind the rows. <laughs> when we look at the inner area, right, we've got... This here has got like kind of a green petal. So I'm going to go a little dark here. I'm going to take my green. And interestingly enough, you can see I darkened it with my phthalo blue, right? Mm. Now I could have darkened it with a contrasting color, like one of my two reds. But I think that this is going to be my nice dark. And here, 
where everything is deep, I will start with this and see how we do as we pedal up. So I'm going to paint this in. And one of the things I'm going to want to do is pull the brush stroke upwards. See how I'm doing? Oh, yeah. This will help me later when I'm trying to show the directionality of the rose. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try to make this very bright. There's some really interesting things going on. Uh, there's interesting things going on so, in art, really, today? It, well, I, today is apparently Mother's Day in the U.K., Oh, happy Mother's Day, UK. That's pretty interesting. That and, is pretty interesting. And I noticed that Tiana, uh, she's one of our regulars. She has her mother-in-law, Vicky, painting along with her today. Does she have Vicky painting with her so today? That's kind of exciting. We have a lot of our community out here trying to do this along with us. Dude, I'm trying to do this. I'm oh. like trying to find petals because I like for handed it and I'm like, man, there's a lot of petals here. I think Chrissy's painting along today too. I think. Hi, Chrissy. Really. Don't, let the, don't let the design get you guys. It gets me too though, just so you all know. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna make this one green too. <laughs> because sometimes I'll simplify, um, not even necessarily intentionally, it's just a thing that starts to happen because it's very challenging me for me to see everything. So I'm gonna make sure that that's there, that color. We've got a lot of colors in the center that are blending in together. And so that can make this more interesting and a little bit more challenging. I'm gonna get a little of my yellow over here so that this is a very bright green. I'll get my glazing medium so it hopefully blends well. And I'm going to start pulling this down into my shadow color, this light color. And we're going to just try to piece this one little area at a time. I'll make it too overtly complicated if we're lucky enough. Even though rose shapes are quite complicated shapes. Principally, they're fairly simple. So we're just trying to embrace that in any way that we can. I'm going to go ahead and take another light yellow. and I'm going to add a little white to it here, as you can see. And right here in the center, I'm going to lighten this up one more shade. See how we're doing? Yeah. Just one more. We'll see how today goes. It's very challenging to paint the rose. I'm back over into my little green my yellow and see if I can find another petal. Can oh, you, so many petals. Can you find the petal in the petals? Oh, it's so hard. So like, it's interesting in art, there'll be different things that challenge each of us. And sometimes things will be super, uh, as the French would say, facile. And uh, for some, and then not for others. If you're having trouble getting that dark, go right back into your pure green. Just come here and darken that up. See how we're doing? Yeah. A lot of these colors we're painting with today are very transparent. So they're going to be wonderful in that they won't make mud for us, but they also may need a couple layers to get the result. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to go into my yellow, just my bright, bright yellow, but it's got some green here, right? So it's going to tint it or tone it. I'm going to... See if I can't kind of lean into that here. We'll see how that goes as I'm coming around. Now in the center, I think I'm going to go more blue. I'm going to say this is more blue. You can never have enough blue. You can't have enough blue. And that's what this is going to be about. Like we could have done a red rose, and I think we'll do some different roses. One, because I could like work on my roses anyways. Mm. And two, because it's something people are essentially pretty excited to paint, right? I'm having a little trouble with my paint blending out. So what I've done is I've dipped in water and I've mixed that water into the acrylic to help improve the flow. Oh. Because I'm painting with heavy bodies. And that is, they are literally what it sounds like. Now, this blue I'm going to take around like it's a shadow, see? Mm, yes. Because it's going to be very important that I shadow as I go. It's going to be an interesting and critical stage. Shadow as you go. Shadow as you go. Shadow as you go. So over here, it's kind of like blues and reds and yellows, and I'm going to keep working that. I'm going to say my next petal might be like a, maybe a little bit of my purple 
into my magenta over here. Let's uh, see what we've got. Moni, she says, uh, where did it, it was really cute. Don't be scared to paint. Just let the brush flow. <gasps> That's cute. Roses are their own thing, aren't they? Yeah. I'm just coming into this next outer petal that I made here. Kind of a little bit of a shadow we've got going. Yeah, Ken's real happy to be doing roses. This is... Okay, Daria? Yeah, lots of... Everyone's echoing that, that painting flowers is definitely fun. It is fun, and they make beautiful shapes. I'm going to bring this kind of purple around here, like you do. One of the things that you want to do when you're painting a flower, even if you're deviating from the original petal pattern, right? Like, you're not like, oh, I'm going to be, like, strictly adhere to this exact one flower, is make sure that you're wrapping or bricking these out. Yeah, I'm just kind of zooming out so people can see because you're just sort of really kind of getting in there and into that, those those inner opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I'm adding there. a little um, white to my magenta to lighten it. Right? And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to just lighten this just a bit, just a titch. You do. So we still have like the darkness there. And then you can get even lighter, like almost like the white here. And maybe right here, just along this edge, I'm going to give this a light highlight. Even if your petals are facing you and they're super steep and in shadow, you should highlight the edges where the sunlight would have caught them. And it's going to be nice when this is done. It'll feel like all rosish, as they should. Well, yes. As they should. I'm going to go more into, I like to warm up my magenta sometimes with some yellow. I'm going to make my rose a slightly more artistic version. Here's my glazing medium, so I got good blending. And really, that's about that, you know, I want to paint in colors that are brighter than maybe nature. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And this 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 particular one, it has quite a lot of fold out that I'm going to deal with, where it folds backwards, and I'm going to get that by my brush directionality. But first, I have to improve the flow. The spice must flow. The mm. paint must flow. The quinacridone must flow. Says the Moadib. <laughs> If you're but, um, but going, what is any of that? These are weird book references. I'm kind of like a, a geek, so things will happen but during a painting. All, all the wild quinacridones are now kept in a wildlife preserve where they're <laughs> no longer milked. They're allowed to live for full natural lives. There are no actual wild quinacridones, but yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to come back with my brush stroke. I'm going to come get a little more of my quinacridone, and I'm going to make sure that I come back and I... Take my brush stroke, the direction the petal grows. This is going to be huge when you're making your rose. And one of the reasons I tackled this, even though it's a challenge for me to do these because of how my brain processes certain things, like number orders, the way these petals uh, intricately layer, is because even if things can feel like they're um, maybe challenging for you, you don't want to avoid doing them if you have a if you like them intrinsically. Hmm. If you're like, man, I really like roses, but they're hard. Go for it anyways. Don't 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 avoid the rose because you're like, I think it's really challenging. Embrace the rose. Embrace the rose. And all of its thorny danger. <laughs> and all of its thorny danger. <laughs> now right here I'm gonna smooth this, even though I got my brush stroke like fix going out, because this this is this petal's edge. Right here, though, it's going to start to get really yellow. So I'm going to wipe off my paint, get... See, I'm warming that up with my yellow. Mm -hmm. A lot. There we go. I might even grab some white. I'm going to avoid that green. There we go. And now right here... I'm going to go back and forth. We're going to take this out. This little petal that curves out, but we're going to blend it in like we do and come along the edge here. If you're having trouble with the flow, 
You can add medium, like glazing medium. You can add um, water, but the important thing is to make sure that it's flowing off your brush so that you can get a nice line because that's how you're going to get it. And just keep blending that petal back into the shadow area. See how we're doing? In the direction it would grow. It's going to really help us. Make sure that that lip is sharp and this part is blended. If you're having trouble feeling the transition, you can always wipe off your brush without rinsing, grab a little more of a mid-range and come and blend between the two. See how we're going to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we soften that right there. Yeah. Now, the next pop that we're going to do, it's big. Be ready. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to get a little of my dots into my quinacridone. And right here where this is deep and along this petal, I'm going to add a little bit of that quin shadow. Not like a crazy amount, but just a little bit because I want to show the values. Sometimes it can help you do um, a pencil sketch or something so you can get the values. Let me look at it mm. from the distance. See how we're starting to bend those petals out? Yeah. Right. I'm going to get a little yellow as I'm working it out. I'm having a suspicion that this is going to actually kind of paint relatively quickly. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think so. I'm just going to. I'm going to just petal by petal. I'm taking yellow and mm. I'm making a nice little bright highlight like right here. We're going to paint this rose one petal at a time. One petal at a time. This is just the yellow, right? I'm just making sure that this is bent out because that's what I'm trying to talk about is the bent out part of that flower. And I've got to get this petal right here. And I think I'll take this one into the blue. Like you do, but maybe I'll make it a little turquoise because that's one of my favorite colors. And I get that with a little bit of my phthalo green and phthalo blue. I'll go a little more phthalo blue. And I'm going to just come here and paint the dark, dark, dark. You guys ever do that uh, poem in the dark, dark night of the dark, dark woods? <laughs> I used to do that with my kids a lot. They like it. So you can see at first, I don't go in the direction of the petal because I've got to get it crisply lined in. Yeah. And I'm going to bring this blue around even back into my first blue. See how I'm doing? So that these, these lines, there you go, just like right along here, are dark. See how I'm coming along this petal edge? Yeah. Very lightly. I'm creating that shadow. And it's important to make the shadow. If you don't have the shadow, what do you have? Mm, a soft, fuzzy outline on the ground? <laughs> or something of that nature, I guess. You'd be like, Peter Pan, I got no shadow. I'm about like there, right? So, what is everyone thinking about their rose? They overwhelmed. They're optimistic. Well, How are they there, there's feeling a lot of people about really it? Really interested in doing roses, and they really appreciate this because flower power is something that everybody needs practice with. It is, and you know, learning that there's basic shapes and that the that you know, knowing that a rose is a bowl shape. Certain flowers are bowl shapes, trumpet shapes, star shapes. That can really help you knowing to brush stroke in the direction of a petal growth. That can really help you. There's a lot you can do to really help yourself. So I've got that right there. I'm going to get a lot of my white, glazing medium. See, painting painting roses is a metaphor for all the things you need to do to, to, to solve your life problems. Yeah. Clearly. That's what Could we're discovering be. today. Could be. I don't want to poo-hoo it because that could happen. Now, see, I'm pulling the, the bend of the flower down, saying where the light has gone. See, I want to lean into it. I, 
I think this is good. I'm bending this, bending this, bending this. I like how they, they open up like that. They lean out. With yeah, they the, do. They the will stroke. fold over. Yeah. And you got to catch the fold. And you want to really, really be able to highlight that fold as you're going. Now, that inner shadow, that, that line really, I mean, when you're close up it's on got, it, it I'm looks. I'm my coffee. Yeah. Oh, it's like, what, oh, oh, I'll, I'll get rid of picture in picture. But like, if you step forward two, two seconds, I'll zoom in and you can see like there. Mm -hmm. It looks all really kind of cartoonish. But when you step back here, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, that looks super awesome. And that's important to know. And listen, you can spend as much time as you want transitioning these two, these two places. If you're like, I don't want to see that brush stroke, you can for sure get your, you know, blue and green back together. Get your glaze and then just make sure that there's a very soft, not seeable line. You can do that. That's doable. Just it's, don't lose your deep shadow. And you know, it's it's I mean, like I I think it's a personal preference. I like the painterly nature of things where you can see the brush strokes and you're not trying to hide the materials. For me too, but everybody is a different person. Yes, they are. We are <laughs> we are all different people. I, I know that was sort of an obvious statement, but no, you know no, what I'm I mean? Just teasing, but it's an, it's one of those good statements to just make and reflect on because we definitely are all unique. And that's something that we don't always keep mindfulness about. No. And, and remembering, like, it's so hard sometimes, even in basic communication. Are you just lining that? With just a little bit of white so that there's a bit of a highlight for me. Then I'm going to put a little bit right here across the petal. And then coming here and just highlighting, highlighting, highlighting at the high rays of the petal. Okay. See what I'm doing? Yeah. You're still using that, that that cat's tongue? I don't think I'll even get into the bigger cat's tongue until I get out there. And I'm sorry I'm cat's tongue again. You could use a filbert. You could use a round. You could use a bright. You just want something that's going to let you work these petals easily. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what you want. I'm going to look at this. So, like, I know I'm going to deviate a bit <laughs> from the plan. Why is that? Just because I do that. You do. I do. You, you very... I deviate. No, no two paintings are the same for you. No. And uh, the reference photo for me is always sort of like a guidance system. It's like it's, like, it's, like, it's a, a loose. A suggestion. It's, it's right. It's a suggestion. Even it's a loose suggestion. Before, even when you painted it before, you're like, maybe. Eh, go another way. But you know what? There's also the times where you'll paint two paintings nearly identically. That's so weird too, isn't it? Like if I pre-paint it and then I do it again and then we're just sitting there trying to like, how many stars did you put in that one? We're like having to, we're having to like look at the the video to figure out which one was the show painting versus the reference one because they're so close. I'm pulling this purple shadow out pretty far, this sort of like minor petal. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I wiped that off and I'm going to get some white on here. But see, my purple pigment's so powerful, it's still there. You can still see I'm gonna it. I'm going to zoom in on that in a minute there. Okay, and I'm going to just make sure that I light this with just this wonderful kind of periwinkle highlight along the petal. So that it's quite light along that petal. If that, you know, that's what we're going to do there. And we got to put another little pink here. So let's go get our pink. Hold on, why are they on pink? I'm here. We're filming, are you? I know you're focusing. What? What's zoomed out? Oh. Okay, and that pretty palette, I think that's the prettiest palette. It's my favorite palette to, like, mess around with. All right, All right so I've just got my quinacridone. And I am going to get this petal right here. They were asking, you're, you're using, what, Jack Richardson Gray Matters palette paper, right? Okay, yeah, I really love this, and honestly, I have to say... Okay, so you guys, if you follow a lot, you know I was just at a show called NAMTO, which is the art materials show. And um, I forgot my palette paper and my glazing <laughs> liquid. That's and I right. would just like to th shout out Richardson <laughs> and also Golden. Because what you guys don't know is even though they have booths and they have things on display, all the product there is generally already sold and leaves with distributors from the show. So, uh, Golden Paint, like, moved heaven and earth to get me a bottle of glazing liquid because it's totally out. Mm -hmm. 
as did Richardson, like really help us out by giving us some sheets off the display, the, <laughs> off the, display. the show floor display. They're like, here, just have a couple. Beep, beep. It was. I just want to thank them both for being decent about it because it was a really weird um, problem to even was, be confronted with. Yeah, I was like, oopsie, <laughs> but you know, you get kind of spoiled on this pallet paper, and you so do. It was very nice of them to be like, sure, sure. If you feel like that's something that you want. And I'm like, I really do. So I'm just trying to pick each little segment and I'm painting first the dark color in. You know, just giving it a go. So this is Fatima's first time on a live. She wanted to say hi. Hi, how are you doing? She's doing good. She's happy to make it to a live. I'm happy to have you live. Well, we love you guys coming to these lives. It's one of the things that make our day. That's why we do this. Totally true. Like, like literally, the whole reason why we do this is for you guys. So, art should be out there. People should have all the art education they need because life is hard enough. And, and and we like the idea of it being for freezies. For freezies. I'm gonna get some white on my brush and really lighten it. And I'm going to come along this little edge here and, and blend a little of this petal in, bend that back. and. <laughs> Sorry. On. They were just saying that uh, they, were, they were surprised at how many days it's been since I've logged into WoW. Oh, in it's yeah, it's killing him, but his computer's in repair. So well, can't... actually, it's that's not the one that's in for repair. Oh. Uh, I've still got my WoW machine. I've just been busy, busy getting ready for our show. For, for our meetup. A meetup. We've got... But well, made it cons just around the corner, yeah. And, and, and like all of your all of your stuffs sold out there. Oh yeah, we we the class sold out. We yeah, just have the workshop and the meetup left now. Yeah, those that was are crazy. I'm pretty. Those I was looking at the numbers on that. We're gonna, those are probably sold out too. So yeah, <laughs> that'll be fun. We have we have some exciting stuff for that that's coming. But so working hard on that, but we got to get him back on WoW. There's going to be some WoW stuff later. that happens at the event. Later. So what are you doing with your pink though? Oh, I wait. am lightening the edge of this petal, right? Because I'm yeah. putting some of this in the sun. I know that. I know we get to rambling. I just want to make sure that we're not missing because you're what you're doing there is really, it's really interesting how you put the the highlights along that top edge to make it look like the it's curling out. I'm just, yeah, we're just trying to get the curl, man. Curly like a wait. Oh, I just spotted on a white part of my canvas. Uh, I'll smudgy that off. Stalian's like, I like Daniel Smith. I do too. Oh my gosh, they are sweetie pies. Yes. So it's really interesting, like the paint companies that are really about it, like they're really about what they make. They all kind of like each other. Yeah. <laughs> the ones they who really are like, do. this is all about making really good quality product for people. They all like really, really like respect each other for that experience. Yeah, and that's that's the probably the nicest part about being able to hang out with that community of people, seeing who takes pride in the work that they do. Yeah. Those are wonderful, wonderful folks. I'm going to go green here, I think. And what's nice, because it's transparent, oh, look, I can take it oh. right over the pink and darken that pink in the weirdest way. This works because it's thalo. And it's isn't it a contrasting okay. color? Is it that right? is, but because it's transparent, instead of making something gray, it almost makes like a purple or something mm. so it's a very interesting um shadow maker <laughs> coming along there and i'm gonna bring this around here and fold it in like you do well like you want to fold do. things in see and then I'm going to get a little of my yellow. It's a swirling vortex of love. <laughs> I thought you were going to like quote happy. I was like, that's not really <laughs> Family friendly, family friendly. That is so not family friendly. <laughs> well, yeah, no. 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 But we are. We are. We just, are. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> So I'm still trying, can you guys see how I'm still trying to get these brush strokes the direction mm -hmm. of the petal? And then I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to come in with some just really as much yellow pigment as I can. Yellow can be hard because 
so many companies make it so transparent it barely paints over anything. So it's one of those pigments that if you can improve, that might be one white. White and yellow, if you improve them, it really helps a lot. Now, are, are you trying to color match the reference? No. You're just, no. just kind of a... If I were to stare at this reference, I can't even explain to you what would happen to me. The madness that would ensue? Um, yeah. Actually, to do flowers, what I've had to learn to do, my success strategy for that is, is that I have to do um, black and white tonal studies. And I have to step away from my photo reference at some point, work out some values and some shapes, and then just sort of use it as a guideline. Because on especially roses, there's just certain things, uh, spiral staircases, uh, there's just certain things like it just, my brain just goes. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're harder than another thing, really particularly, it's just how my brain deals with the information. We all have brains, hopefully. I'm going to take my yellow along here and kind of make a nice little implied bigger swirl. Just enjoying that. And if I lose too much of my dark color, I just go right back into my phthalo and come right back here and shadow up. There is much celebration of the idea of there being a Sherpa Khan event next year. <laughs> Oh, and you're you're a Sherpa corn, so why not have a Sherpa con? <laughs> what I'll say is, I am at this moment super happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I think that's just what it is. I think when I get some blue or some quinacridone, I'll come in and I'll darken that shadow later. But right now, I'm going to let it just rest and soften the edges on this flower petal. See, I'm softening it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, no, no! I just I. I Boy, now that we get to have chat recorded, I just want to make sure that I'm passing along things that they're saying so that you guys... So oh, you know so I'm not like, hey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me! <laughs> no, we, we're, then you're going to be like, that, no, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go just yellow here, but it's got a little of the green on there, but it's brighter, right? We're just going to let that be like a little petal that's peeking out because I think a little slightly green yellow petal will bring that in. I like to tuck them. If you'll notice, I'll tuck them into each other. Like they're folded, because they would be. Which you only really get if you, um, and you know what we'll do is like right after the show, I'll have John photograph this and we'll put like a printable reference photo of the painting too. And maybe I'll make a whole nother traceable that is based off what I actually did here. <laughs> so, but I like to have things ready for you guys just in case you're painting along in the show. Oh, that looks really nice. I oh, like it that a lot. Good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to go like kind of this weird purple blue here. This is an interesting little bit of big kit I'm going to try to try to do something about. I'm not. Hopefully I won't get too lost in it. Maybe I might need to. Oh, this is a hard series of petals. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go purple and blue. Then I mix purple and blue. Yes, I did. Let's see what I can what I can fathom out. Can you can you fathom it? It's super hard. These things they get to be uh super challenging. I'm going to bring this petal around here. I'm going to fold it into this area for sure at least right now bring this here i'm painting this all in now i'm going to tuck it in so whoever's next to it now i'm doing this i'm tucking in these lines and then where i can i'm going to continue my deep shadow around my highlights i hope john can catch this on camera See how I'm carrying it around my highlights? Yeah. So that that feels like it's in that dark shadow, and that's really going to help me handle what I've got going on here. Right now I've got kind of a little bowl happening. 
think that's a good shadow. Actually like it quite a bit. Now I'm gonna try to create sort of a outer edge of all this. So it's so if you think about this being a bowl, one thing that I, I can probably guesstimate is that this would show it would have a little foreshortened petal area there. And so one way I can do is I can take a little of my um, yellow and my pad red light. And I can come from this red rise of the petal. Very carefully because those are contrasting colors. But the fact that they are this will make this super interesting visually. Mm -hmm. Whenever you can tuck up contrast like that, oh, some good stuff happens. And also purple and orange is one of my favorite combos. So I'm just pulling this up here. And now I'm going to go get my cad red light. And I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to bring the shadow up now. See, from the depth of the petal. So now we have the top of it. We've got some foreshortening of it. Just trying to be neat and tidy. Because what I need to do always with my petals is show the fold, show the backside that there, there's a dark, like there, there's a shadow, that it's deep. And that will help me, you know, get a lot of my other petals like adjusted. So I've got my blue here. And I can go back even into my, with a smidge of my purple. Smidge it. Don't get crazy with it. Smidge it. Right. So there we go. And then I'm going to very, this is really hard. I'm going to very softly bring a little of this up here. See how that darkens it? Oh, yeah. But just a little bit because I want to somehow preserve this blue that's happening. If I go too crazy with it, a bunch of orange will get on my um, brush and ruin my color. Don't you just hate when that happens? Super a whole lot. Orange just jumps on your brush like that. Well, that would be one of the challenging things about a project like this, wouldn't it? Orange. Dealing with, look, I got the blue, now it kind of carries into that. That's great. Yep. Orange just sometimes does that. Jumps right up. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. But now that we've got that nice, you know, deep shadow happening there, I can come and get a bunch of white. And a little more just thalo blue, because it's so bright. And come along this outside. With this lighter color that is so poppy against the pink, isn't it? Oh, I love it. It's super fun. So a little bit of my fluid. And then I'm going to just make sure. I'm thinking about the directionality of the petal. Now I know I've got to tuck this little sucker. And I want to bring it around here on its little edge. And then definitely take this down here. I'm going to come get some just blue on my brush, but it's going to be the dark blue. And come around the bottom. Let's see if we can't show the shadow in the deep petal. Show the shadow in the deep petal.
I'm going to bring this down here. Now, Jessica was asking, is Liquitex slow dry gel okay for uh, for slow for the flow? So it's really a preference. It It is good for um, improving flow. It is good for slowing drying time down. Some people feel it gets tacky, uh, sticky as it dries. And, but some people feel like they prefer its viscosity. So that's really an artist by artist preference. Hmm. Um, it doesn't glaze, and you definitely, definitely want to follow its instructions exactly. Always, always, always. As you generally should. As you generally should with art materials. <laughs> so I'm going to get some white onto my brush, and I'm going to just come back here and make sure that I'm... Holding my petals the right way. A little more white. Now here I think it's super important to highlight that little crease. And then just take this down. I'm just paying attention to the brush directionality. Because that's going to really help me have my rose look very rosy no matter how I curve and curl my petals. Now, Ashrita asked me to pass along that she really appreciates you doing these paintings, and you've taught her so much and just really loves to be able to come on here and paint with you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Cinnamon doesn't get to read the chat, and I do. So I get to see all this wonderful stuff out here. And we've got, we've got over 500 people all out here painting along with us, talking, chatting. So thank you guys for being our art family and being part of what we do. It's just wonderful. I'm going to bring my little green line through there. You'll notice I will tuck back in often. Like any place that I can sort of tuck back into the petals and interweave them, I will. You know, it's like exciting to me. Super, super exciting to me. A little more of my yellow. And then... Come in here. You know, so we're brightening the green a bit. Not too much. I'm going to wipe off. Get some nice yellow pigment. And come along that petal edge with the bright yellow. Tuck in where I can. And that's what I mean when I take the petal into, like, like extend its journey into the other petals a little bit. That's what I mean by tuck in. And I'm curving that brush stroke in, curving it. Curving it in. I love our Sunday paints. Me too. I'm just taking this along the edge here, but I wanna leave that deep shadow, right? I don't wanna lose that. And if I do, I definitely want to come back with, like, say, say Thalo Blue or something in here and make sure that I'm holding that deep shadow at the base of the petal, right? Because we want to feel like things are deep and folded. Let's look at it at a distance. Oh, see, now it's starting to be all rosy, isn't it? Yeah. It's going a little different direction than its prime, but I'm okay with that because Lord knows I go my own way. But that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. You are the Sherpa. That, well, no, it's just what I do. I can't help myself. Well, it's 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 your <laughs> it's your show, so I guess you can kind of do what you want. I I mean maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. I'm going to get a little yellow over my quinacridone. I always love it when my quinacridone gets warmed with just a smidge of yellow. It's super exciting to me. Oh, and I'm going to come right here and tuck it in, which means I just took my line back further than I expected. I love doing that. Tuck in, tuck in, tuck in. And I'm going to just get a little more of my yellow into that.
You can see it's like warmed up a bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna bone that out into this uh, little petal that's right here. Just blending that into the petal that's right there. Paying attention to the brush stroke directionality. And I will offload and get some just yellow. And come in from my edges. You know, sort of brushing that in. So I go along the line there and then I pull up the color in. See what I'm doing? Roses are uh, a lot like Zentangles. I think they're actually pretty good. If you can keep from freaking out over it, they're like uh, they're like Zentangles in that it will help you lower your blood pressure and <laughs> relax a bit after, you know, a possibly challenging week. Which you might have had. <laughs> Sometimes we all have challenging weeks. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Um, Best laid uh, plans of mice and men. So bring this here. Now that I noticed a lot of folks were in here uh, chatting about different different types of paint. Do you have a suggestion on on when you're picking your paint, what to, what to look for? Okay, so what you're going to want is I'm learning more and more about this. Um, one of the things that I just learned at the NAMTA show is how important it is the milling process to your paint. So in a paint company, an acrylic paint company, you want somebody that mills three to four times on their paint. The milling process apparently prevents that cottage cheesing that you might see in paint sometimes. Um, you want somebody that really loads pigment into the paint. If you're going to be doing a lower cost paint from um, pro, you know, pro paint, Try like a prosumer paint, like that mid grades. So there's like M. Graham, there's Galleria, there's um, no, yeah, it's... Amsterdam. There's a bunch of mid grade bands. If you're going to go to top brands, you're going to want to pick somebody that's really into their pigments. They're really into what they make for artists. Remember, you can use coupons to get sales. I think my favorite white on the planet is golden. I could just go on and on about this all day. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's really the thing is that you want a company that's been there for a while, cares about your consumer experience, is available where you can get it, is on sale off of list cost often, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that um, has a customer su customer service line that they answer. Yeah. Yep. That's that's really good stuff. <laughs> you really, really, really don't want somebody that won't answer their customer service line. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to... My uh, CAD red light, interestingly enough, and I'm going to get like a just the lightest. It's like a patch of sunlight hit the ground through tangerines. And I'm going to just make sure that I'm lightening this corner here and some of the space a little bit even more. So that it has a good value shift. You guys can see that. You when they have bad value shift, they go to the dark side. They go to the dark side. They go to the bad place. <laughs> but, you know, I hear the dark side has cookies. But you see what I'm fighting for here is where my lights and darks are. More than anything, I'm fighting for light edges on my petals and dark values in the shadows. Mm -hmm. All right now, like, so if I wanted to darken that shadow, I could get a little of my phthalo blue. And even some of my quinacridone. Well, I may have to come adjust that camera. So you... And then I can come along this little edge here. Look at this. And make oh, a wow. very deep shadow. But it's so tucked against the lip, isn't it? It's super tucked. You have to be super caref careful if you're going to do this because you want to, you don't want that shadow going too deep. It won't look right. You want just a little bit of a deeper shadow that's happening down there. You're showing, oh, yeah, I've got that deep value, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can get right into your quinacridone because of the nature of quinacridone. And look at this. The nature of quinacridone. It was transparency and the fact that it doesn't get muddy. Because that's what I really have to balance out. I've got to fight for. I just took some glazing medium to blend. 
You can see what it did for me, didn't it? If I'm having trouble, I wipe off. I get some more quinacridone. So glazing medium. I'm just going to make sure that I've got a nice value shift in my rows everywhere that I have one. Those brush strokes are going the right direction. Come on, brush strokes. Play with me. You know, I'm I, just layering here. Can you see me layering? Uh-huh. I think it's Thorny Gates' birthday, and she's joining us Happy here. Happy birthday, Thorny Gates. She's just here painting with us today, so, which is always nice. We love our all, all of the Sherpettes that join us and come I and really, play with us. Super true. All right, so that looks pretty good. Happy with that little little petal of awesomeness. Ooh. Let's make a high aqua something coming maybe around here. I'm just trying to think. So... I do this, I need to probably pull a petal here and then pull one there. So let's first, let's first, first, first get our green and our blue. And we're going to do a neat little trick. We're going to make a nice dark value area. And then once we have that dark value area worked out, we're going to put a couple petals that are lighter in it. And pull out their complicated structures through the layering. Cool. So I'm just going to get this right now with just its dark value through this whole space. There'll be many, many petals. Well, not many, many, but there'll be some, there'll be a variety of petals that are happening here. Brent and Helena is birthdays as well. Happy birthday, oh, Brent and Helena. They're just, there's so many of them having wonderful days. Thank you guys for spending your time with us. Oh, well, making my shadows. These shadows are nice. They need to be. They have now, a lot of shadow. I, I noticed that, that, that this the layering up from that dark to light really makes a big difference. It is a big deal. I'm taking that shadow all that way. Oh, you, you, you faked me out. I thought you were going over for more paint. You were going I know, someplace I was just else. Moving down. And I'm going to take this shadow over this way. Like you do. All right. We've got these nice shadows. Julianne says this is super stunning. Loves Thank these color so combinations. Much. I like I like the opportunity to have some like really exciting colors. It really is neat. Now I'm gonna come right here from this mid range and I'm going to press down what is going to be the top of a petal. Oh. And tuck it right in there. All right, I'm gonna just come right here and I've got the white on my brush and I'm just tucking it in. You can now make sure that you've got a little brush stroke thoughtfulness happening. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to wipe off and I'm going to get a little more white. I'm going to do something similar right here. I'm going to tuck out from this. Another petal that is coming through and tucking into its friend. So that's like two petals right there. Phone. No, I'll just run its little edge between these two. That's what I'm doing. I'm running the little edge. Let's see how that's looking. All right. So I've got to let that dry a bit. I'll come back with an even more exaggerated highlight that happens right there. I'm going to put out a little more of my blue and green because I can tell I'm low on those colors hmm. as I'm going. And I'm going to remind everybody. Because, you know, we've not had to hair dry anything here, so there hasn't been any opportunity for me to remind people. Oh, that's right. We've been, like, just jamming. We've just been, just, yeah, you've been going, going. We've go, been go. jamming. Yeah. And Sorry, that's not okay. That's a, well, yeah, no, it's okay. You, <laughs> you can jam away. We just can't infringe on their IP. <laughs> but, I'm uh, getting myself some clean water. That's going to help me keep my uh, little rainbow deliciousness good. And I'm going to get myself some Doc's Purple while John's reminding you. I'm going to add a deep shadow. I just went a little touch of blue, a lot of Doc's, and I'm going to increase the shadows in a couple places. Well, you're here. You remind them. Of what? Well, the, what's in the description below? Oh, I don't. You can go to the description below to see a complete list of materials. Mm -hmm. um, 
to find out where the free traceable is and the free reference photos. Um, it looks like on this one, I will be updating even our webpage a little bit. Yep. Just because I'm doing my own thing. You've gone rogue. I have. It's known to happen. You're to roguish some days. Piratey even, maybe. Piratey even. See, I'm coming on the outside of this with a dark value, and I'm going to increase this little pocket. See how we're doing? And then coming to the outside, leaving some of my blue value. It's okay to play with the values in these spaces. Somebody needs to. Right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody needs to. This is pretty dry now, so I can come and get a little of my phthalo blue and my white and make quite a light white. If you need to get some glazing medium, you can to improve flow or water. And just make sure that there's an edge here that's super light. Maybe like right here. right there i definitely want to be like more aqua more turquoise so i'm gonna make sure there's a little green and blue to that mix a lot of white into it though so it's a high turquoise and come along the edge of that petal just making sure it's got the bright value system that it needs to have you have to wipe off which i do often and reload with a even brighter highlight. Sometimes it's fun to even come in and you you can take a little yellow into it. Into your turquoise. Warm it up. I'm going to come along here. I don't know if the camera can see everything as I do it. It certainly is trying. Is it trying? <laughs> it's like, I'm squinting. No, it sees it okay. Okay. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to tuck in with this sort of bright green turquoise. These are like ocean colors. They are. We like those oceany colors. We do. Now, I'm going to... And I'm going to just keep going. If I can, I'd like to give a big art high five to Chris and all the other partners of burgeoning painters out there that provide that support system of, you can do it. And, you know, it's just awesome for you guys. And I appreciate those support systems. So art high fives to you guys. Yeah. I'm tucking in that, like, turquoise one here now. And we're going to come around the side. So the trick is, like, finding areas where you think, like, a... Like the bowl would be thick and there'd be a deep shadow. So it's like, you know, another trick you might not know is that green and purple make an extraordinary deep shadow. So you could come underneath something like this. What? So someone in, in chat said that they had a glitter accident. And glitter read, accidents happen. Well, right. And I read it right next to a car accident. So I had this picture of a tanker truck just exploding on the freeway full of glitter. And there being a news report, you know, and, you know, it was in my mind being read by Robin Williams. Oh, so, the, gosh, wouldn't the world be beautiful if it was like that? You know, I, I, I chuckled for a moment because it all happened in a split second. <laughs> just making sure my shadows are there that they're deep and they're considerate so I got this interesting shadow right that I'm gonna keep playing with by the purple and green mixture right, and just keeping it going here purple and green now rinse that out you know, pull out some of my just thalo. Go ahead and have a nice little blue petal. 
right here, but not take out my wonderful deep shadow. You know how we're doing? Mm hmm There we go. I think we're coming almost to the end of the area that's going to be like blue, and then we're going to go into the purples and pinks, and over here we're going to go into the yellows. So that's what we're working. This is, I like how the layers of colors just come together on this. Yeah, I do too. It's like an ocean of colors lapping up on the beach. These rainbow roses are really fun and they can help us slow down and remember what all the joy in our little art creation process is really all about. You know, and it's just remembering that we've got to maintain our shadows. You know, you lose your shadow, go back and get it back. Okay. Shadow back. See how we're doing? Got to go all Peter Pan. I'm going to get my shadow back. Is that what we're doing? Going all Peter Pan? I don't know. So what's everybody saying? I guess I know I get to see after. Oh, you know, I, I, it's I, so, very hard, especially right now, for John to even read the chat because I, the computer stuff, too. Actually, a good question just actually popped right up. Oh, I love good questions. Can I mix white and blue to get phthalo blue? No, you could mix white and phthalo blue to get a very light blue, but phthalo mm. blue is a is a uh, chemically created color. Um, alternatives can be Windsor blue. If you really can't get phthalo blue, you can get uh, Prussian blue is a little bit close. Mm. Uh, phthalo turquoise is kind of fun, um, but really some colors are made by the paint manufacturers. Yeah, we've noticed that, it, especially in chat, we've got a lot more folks from all over the world joining us. And sometimes it's just tricky to find those paint colors. So it, it is, and it's a here's the trick. Like where wherever you are, they put the pigment colors down because sometimes they'll change. Like I've got phthalo blue green shade, but you can have phthalo blue red shade, which is actually ultramarine blue. <laughs> so there's the PB fifteen three that's phthalo blue green shade, but if you're painting like a student paint, right? Like it's not like got really expensive pigmentation in it. It's probably going to be green shade, and there's very few standards. A lot of companies call phthalo blue Windsor blue, and sometimes that can help you out of the, uh, you know, if you're not here um, about where to go. And next year, and we're going to try to go to, what, where is it, Frankfurt? Oh, yeah, for sure. So we can go to the art show in Frankfurt to understand. I'm highlighting, guys. I'm highlighting my petals. Boop, 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 boop. Let me get up there so you can see the petals. And I'm yeah. just creating these petal highlights. You can see how we're doing? Mm -hmm. So that we have those lovely value transitions. Ken would like us to remem remember that glitter is not always good for the environment. We should be we should be responsible glitterers. That is actually really true. There's a whole issue around that. Um, most of the damage is from apparently um, makeup, hmm. but those companies, a lot of the companies that are in that that area, are um, doing uh, fish safe glitter now. Yes, it's made of like sugar-based kind of things and other yeah, technological Yeah, it's, it's, it's not wonders. as dangerous to the little officials. It breaks down in water and stuff. So I'm going to come to the outside edge with this light color. It's a very light color, as you can see. Just working this little petal out, working its light color. And wipe off. Get some just thalo blue. But listen, if you had to do this with um, ultramarine, you could. Uh, you would just have to not use any CADs with the ultramarine. You'd have to use um, the CAD yellow light or um, quinacridone. Hmm. Interesting thing. So I'm just trying to blend this out while keeping my highlight, as you can see. Taking my thalo and enjoying. How that's going. We're nearly there. We it's made a lot of rows. Really good. We've gone a long way. We have. So much has happened in a short amount of time. This is the rose less, less traveled. It kind of is getting to be, right? Yeah. Oh, so wild. So 
I've got this crazy petal right here, and then I've got some of these here, and I've got this deep space. I'm going to work this deep space just real fast, real, real, real fast, right here. And actually, I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to mix uh, my quinacridone and my um, pad red medium. Yeah, I'm... I'm kind of really excited about learning more about the paints that are available globally um, and where those exchanges are. I know that's like a passion of mine. I, and I'm just excited to go pay, to go film the machines and make little videos about them. <laughs> this is true. I love that. It's like it's it's my own version of Sesame Street for grown-ups. It kind of is. We get to like watch the little video machines go and. I'm going to wipe this off, but not rinse it. I'm going to grab some of my cad yellow. And before this is dry, I'm going to come along Whoa. here. I just put some fire on that. Right. And I just want to do it before it's dry so that I can take these two wet edges and blend them. See how I'm doing? Mm hmm. Just making sure that I can blend that. That's a nice yellow petal. Get a little more yellow. And just go the full yellow right here. You do. There we go. Just blending that in. I can go back and get my Quinn and CAD. And it's just about making sure that my shadow's tucked here. Tuck that shadow. See, I'm tucking it back into the other petal. Yeah. Make sure that you're just pulling that drama into this space. There we go. Just brushing it in. There we go. See how she's looking. All right. So she's looking better. I'm going to get some yellow on my brush, a little glazing medium. And right where these two join, I'm going to make sure that there's a nice soft transition if I can. I will come back with more yellow. I want to just give this some type of reasonable transition. So it's not so hard. See, I'm just like blending this out. Mm hmm. I can always come back with another little brighter light of yellow. But the blend like this, you can really only do while everything's wet. So we're going to let that have its little moment. Have its little moment. It's got to have its little moment. All right. Let's work uh, maybe this for a second while we're letting all of this state. Now I might get into my bigger brush for this bigger petal. So this is my number eight cat's tongue. You were using just up until now the four? I was using the four cat's tongue. I'm going to pull out my quinacridone and a smidge of my dox purple. And this outer petal here, I'm going to work this one. Where are you going to start? <laughs> Yeah, you're messing with me. I don't mean to be. I'm just trying to keep track of what the heck I was thinking. Because again, remember what I said? I get, I get real lost. No, it's it's just I, I for me it's kind of funny because it's kind of like a video game. It's like where <laughs> is the Sherpa gonna put her brush next? Dude, sometimes the Sherpa doesn't know. Oh my gosh, what was the episode where I counted? Was it? Uh, it was the one with the tree where I went to touch the canvas. What was it? Thirteen, eighteen, some crazy number of times, and then. Finally, finally put paint on canvas. It wasn't the fun guy, was it? No, I don't. No, no, no. It was like the tree. It was a tree. Yeah, there was there was, was one the episode right. I counted how many times before you, you, you. It you, was the drippy tree. I was forced to change the name of. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I keep pushing the wrong button and switching into looking at your hair. When I was too little to know. Oh yeah, turn this one over to YouTube and have fun, guys. <laughs> 
now I know. <laughs> yeah, push that one with YouTube and you'll see they'll be like, nope, that does not have anything to do with terms of service. They are allowed to use these words. Yep. You do not own words. <sighs> so I'm adding a little purple. So tough to be a baby tuber. It's true. Just nice. I love this color combo. Going off the canvas on a couple places with these petals. Interesting. So Lynette was asking why use cad red light instead of cad red medium? I you could use either. I really love for this the brighter uh, combo that the two give. Oh, okay. So it was just like just for the brightness of it. It was exciting for me. I'm kind of worried about the brush directionality, so I'm just making sure that my petals are brushed the right way, as you do. But not for anything like particularly worrisome, if that makes sense. I've got this going. And then maybe I'm going to get a little bit of my white on here. And just a couple places, make sure that I lighten. That's such a big petal. It's, it's hard for me to make sure. a big petal. Yeah, I want to make sure I catch it all. Ugh, I'm trying to make sure I catch it all. I'm painting it. You can move faster than my. I can. I can. If, you, if it's John moved as fast as I moved, y'all would be like, you can be in your studios. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, I, I, can, I can make it move that fast. It's just. But not no without, like, stressing everybody out, like, yeah, a lot. It becomes nausea cam. <laughs> nausea cam is my favorite cam. <laughs> It's like our new troll response system. Oh, yeah, guys? Enjoy <laughs> Nazi Cam. The Sherpettes know to buckle up. <laughs> That's just with the new cameras, because I can program their movement, um, we'll definitely have to do that. It's like the bucking camera show. Right? They come in, they troll, and then all of a sudden the camera's like, blah, 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 blah. we're like, everybody will like come up with the code word that Sherpettes know. They all know to close their eyes. Right. So we're like, <laughs> So we could be like, Ravens on Tuesday, and then everybody like goes like this, and then we go, for the trolls. <laughs> is, that, is that bad? I don't know. <laughs> we do all sorts of weird, <coughs> kooky stuff. You have to like have watched two or three shows before you get everything. It's like, what's a hoot, and why do we give them? <laughs> what's a hoot, and why do we give them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's a smidge, and is it a metric unit? Smidge is a very technical term. Do not underestimate the smidge. Nope. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's imperial, too. Yeah. It's, yeah. The queen came up with a smidge. Oh, I'm not the queen. Oh, man. I don't even know how to deal with girls that call themselves a queen. It's weird. Well, I was just, just I was just oh. in general, I was, I was just sort of, you know, projecting out, not making, you know, particular commentary on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's just one of my soapbox, that whole queen thing. I'm a queen, really? Because, like... <laughs> well, I mean, you could... <laughs> maybe, maybe like, Madonna is <laughs> self-declared queen, but I think the rest of us are just getting by. I still do my own grocery shopping. So I'm just pinking up this side more. Pinking up the side. Pinking up the side. Pinking up the sides. Now, is this is this? Oh, hold it there, you. I'm pinking up the sides. Are you using magenta? Yeah, I'm sticking with my magenta and my docks. Now, magenta is a funny color. I, I, it threw me because I, it's a red, right? Quinacridone magenta is a red. It's well, yeah, it's it's a magenta. It's a red, definitely on the red side of everything. It's it, but it's so weirdy purpley, and well, it, it yeah, and it's nice and transparent and. It kind of a lot makes of good you, stuff with magenta. It makes you feel like it's a blue, even though it's a red. Yeah, it's got a cool nature to it. All right, so we are. I think I'm pretty happy with that petal. 
We're getting there. I'm on my third cup of clean water, guys. Do you, do you need mores? No, I don't mind. I'm just, you know, going for it. Now I'm going to kind of do some blue and purple maybe through here. And then, you know, go some like, I don't know. I'm trying to like change it up because we got so aqua here. Yeah. Right. And so one thing I can do though is real quick, like I can like right here. Where it's like this, I could be more magenta oh. in a petal. I could give it a really bright magenta petal. See how bright that is? And then I can just come in. Uh, magenta it, seems like that'd be a lovely girl's name. It it was, and she was in the record of picture show, and she's like, well, my favorite. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> I completely Wife forgot noise about that. of disapproval says <laughs> we pe we peeked a little pink petal out there, like you sometimes might, like you sometimes might think about. Let's go a little purple and blue, right? So we've got this purple and some phthalo. Let's mix these two together and see where we go. So let's get this dark color in, right? We do. Now I'm in the much bigger brush. You may still want to be in a number four. I can't speak for what you need. So here it is. It's got some blue to it. And then as I'm going, I'm going to get more into my purple. Definitely get some glaze if I need it. Now, what does the glaze do? It improves flow oh. Oh. like you want. It also um, slows the drying time down. This glaze, not all glazes, just the golden glazing liquid. Other glazes, you have to wait. It speeds up drying time, allows you to do transparent effects, and you have to allow it to dry completely before you can apply the next layer. I'm just coming here and you can see I'm just more in the blue and, and purpley tones, right? I'm just gonna get more into the purple. So it's a dip in water. It's more into my purple space. Here I come through here. Oh my goodness, brave stuff getting purple into this orange space. That's some brave stuff. There we go. I'll rinse out a little bit. And then I'll take just some purple and a little bit of white. Make sure that this is a very purplish petal. Purplish petals. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to have the full color of the rainbow, right? Mm-hmm. There's nothing I feel very I, rainbow -ish. I need more coffee. Do you? I have some right here that I have not been sipping. Why haven't you been sipping it? Mm. Actually, because I was really enthralled with the chat and watching you. I forgot about it. Is the actual what happened? Is it just been the actual like I don't know? I was well, like in the chat. Things got interesting. Oftentimes you take breaks and you'll like. I don't know. I'm like I'm not today, but yeah, that's true. Well, you you didn't dry anything because you've just been in concentric circles of love. Ah, uh, this well, because like yeah, this doesn't even give me a chance to dry anything, does it? No, you just go 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 go. And, and you you've been painting solid for an hour and twenty minutes. Just boom. Well, we're trying to give a very complicated example of something in a simple simple way well an hour and 19 We're minutes and 36 seconds pretty good here though i'm rinsing out very very thoroughly while you're rinsing that out we're going to get real pink here so get your uh cad and your quinacridone together Hopefully we can get rid of the 
blend the words into the, that's what I'm doing here is blending the words into the into the paint. I'll take this petal, I'll tuck this around like you do, like we've been doing all day because we're tucking petals, aren't we? That's right. Someone tuck said, hashtag, tuck the shadow. Tuck it, tuck it. So weird. Like there's some things I say like later in replay, I'm like, wow, I didn't think that out. <laughs> you know. But I figure, you know, whatever gives you a laugh. <laughs> you know, there have been many famous painters over the years that have said funny little things that, you know, seemed innocent at the time, but, you know, later on they put some context around it. Like, oh, that's that's much funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I am doing a highlight on this particular pink petal. I see I grabbed some white and I'm just stroking that in, highlighting that up. And that's dry. I might come back with a little more magenta to improve that. Really, really rinsing out. I don't want any pigment in here at all, right? And I'm going to come and get my yellow. Now I'm going to have to somehow get a shadow going into this yellow, but I'm going to just start with this bright yellow because that's the hardest bit to get. And I'm going to come off here with this big petal. You can see I'm taking it off here. So it's going right off screen, this big yellow petal. It's on screen. No, I mean off the canvas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> This big yellow guy is going right off the canvas, right? Now yeah. we're going to have to definitely, definitely get a shadow going there. Uh huh. Like you do, but for right now, we're going to come in and pick some of this up and pull another one of these right here. Now we're fill now we're getting to this place where we can fill in and think out and work these things out a little bit more. Now, one of the things I was noticing in here is that people are 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 regularly inspired by how much confidence you paint with and how quickly you can lay down your brush strokes. Yeah. Is there something you have as advice for people to help with that? So, I would say that this comes from I, I don't I don't want to say something buddy like experience but i'm gonna say something buddy like experience <laughs> paint so more. what it is is that you do a lot of paintings and you survive a lot of things going wrong and eventually cumulatively you start to realize that as long as you don't give up and you persevere and you continue moving forward it's going to work out and the more you paint the more you see and the less rethinking yourself that you have to do and the more sort of like, all right, I know I'm going to go this way and you go that way. And even if you get kind of stuck in an area, you're like, ah, I'll just work it out later. When you're new, you have no idea that as long as the paint is dry, you can just keep layering and working it out. I mean, the worst that can happen is that you just so and you just really can't. In watercolor, I can do something that ruins a good sheet of paper. In, uh, I believe in oils, I can do something that's very damaging to a canvas. But in acrylic, once it's dry, I can just go, hmm. Maybe red hair would be better and just keep going in it. And it's one of the things I like about the media. See, is that helpful at all? I don't know. Is that helpful it at all? Is. I don't know. See, we, we knew that acrylic was going to be a metaphor for how we could conquer all of our life's issues. And you just spelled it out for us. Actually, that is a long-term study that was done. And it's called Studio Skills or Studio Resiliency. And what they found is that artists tend to be more emotionally resilient than other demographics of people. And what they think the reason for that is, is that we're constantly confronted with failure. And critique. <laughs> and critique. And you just kind of have to figure out, like, well, how am I going to do this thing I love in spite of all this stuff? And you persevere on. I'm just blending here. Can you see I'm getting a nice blend on this pedal? I'm just softening this pedal and blending. It's so, true. So you, know, you just are... get to this place where you're like, ah, okay, I got it. There are not very many other jobs where people just walk up and randomly make a comment on how good or bad of a job you're doing. Very few. I would say artists and uh, not to invoke 
politics, so no discussing it, but the presidency. <laughs> I think well, a lot of people, if you're in politics, they will tell you if you're doing how you're doing. I think artists get a lot of the same kind of yeah feedback, but not like AC guys or mechanics. No, not like or yeah, plumbers. not in that same way. Like come by and dude, you could move that pipe I, over two inches and it would look better. Right. <laughs> I've taken and especially by people who are totally not qualified. I think football players get a lot of feedback. <laughs> I think there's a few jobs. I'm gonna turn this a little bit and I'm just making some light white paint that I'm gonna brush in on this petal to create the highlight here. Can you guys see that? So that this yellow petal feels very fresh and yellow. See our fresh yellow petal that we have? Can you catch its freshness? It's so fresh. Gail says, my dad critiques everyone. I'm going to say, as a dad, that's something that dads reserve the right to do. No, but you got to work on that. <laughs> no. Not correctly, not rightfully, but sometimes we do it. I mean, y'all do it. It's just, maybe it's the sleep deprivation. I'm not really sure. <laughs> But then as a mom, you like feel like you have a lot of right to weigh in on your daughter's hair. So I guess it's six a dozen of a, six dozen of one. It's, wow, that's not really showing up at all. Not a math channel. Are you catching like how little that our camera can see the yellow values that I have totally like worked for over here? Actually, if you come to this camera, you can see them better. Okay. You just, your your screen doesn't do as good a job because you have so much like, high Look, contrast. it's just still a yellow petal with no shape or form. It, it is pretty uniformish. It shouldn't be. It isn't. Well, I mean, you come over and look, and you can see. You can. You have. You're wireless. Come peek around. I know. Okay. See, like she just disappeared. And see, like you can see there the shading. Oh, Actually, you can see much better there. Yeah. You can't camera over there. Okay. I mean, on that monitor because yeah. that. The studio monitor is so bright in there that it's hard to see the subtleties of the color. It really is. All right. So what I'm going to do to do something about this, I'm going to do something kind of risky, guys. I'm going to take a little purple over here. And you're like, wait, purple is the contrast. It makes gray. Oh, no. That's right. But I need a yellow that's in shadow. And the best way I can think to get there is with my purple. So I'm using my glaze. And I'm going to come here and see if I can get this to do that for me. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yellow shadow. You guys seeing it? Yes. So sometimes things that, as a new artist, you'll be like, oh, that's terrible when I get purple in my brush. My yellows look like... Mm. But when you use the, the contrast a lot, you'll find that they can help you get values that you can't get with another color. Like, it, I don't think it would have looked as good with black. You know, color. It would have deadened out the color, and this doesn't deaden out the color. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably a face slap for you guys, but like, or a no-duh moment, but okay. col color theory is hard. Oh, shit. I mean, like, I've been watching this for a couple years now, and it's like, it's wow. Like, yeah. It's chemistry and science and physics uh, and yeah you got to see this fourth dimensional color wheel to actually see the color wheel I that's always bad news when you discover awesome. that wait what's going on with the color wheel oh no i quit art never mind uh, wait, go study a... something easy like you know medicine here's the thing it's as hard to get um certain areas of art degrees as it is to get a me medicine degree and as expensive <laughs> Well, there's yeah, there's areas of art study that are just intense, They're involved, right? Because you have to understand what came before to understand what is now. Now I'm gonna try a little cheat here. This is um okay, so this is the ultimate varnish brush. Oh, let me go. Wait, wait, that's, I'm gonna show. So what it basically is is these are synthetic filaments. They feel like natural hairs, but they're synthetic filaments. I use it for varnish. But sometimes I can get a very nice blend when my other brushes won't give me one. And and this is total cheat. The total should, cheat. The, total this cheat. thing is almost as soft as a makeup brush. Right. I'm not, yeah. But it's specifically designed I'm making to no handle recommendations acrylic. Here, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, but it handles acrylic, so it's a very specific kind of brush. It's a very specific kind of brush. So you know, don't. It's like now the now the bristles are a little bit wet, and that's going to let me. And I've wiped them off. That can right? be subtractive. 
Yeah, and I'm going to just soften this. Wow. Just a little bit. So I just need it to. So that I've got the shadow here, but that it's blended in. So that I'm going to put out a little more yellow and then get that. And then I've only got uh, one petal into background to do. And then we've survived our rose. So it's, uh, despite the uh, the name, that's not just for varnishing. No, it's not. You can use it for blending and all kinds of things. So I'm going to just see how I'm taking the pure CAD. Yes. And I am doing this sort of curved stroke. And that makes it give that opening kind of look, right? Right. And the pigment, the pure pigment's going to allow me to keep that sense that this is a bright yellow petal. Because I would like to keep the sense that it is a bright yellow petal. So yellow. All right. I feel like I've got nothing else I can say about that little sucker. <laughs> But we're getting there. Right it's now we can in. see the curve. And so I'm going to go right into my green. I haven't even rinsed my brush. I got yellow on it. And let's go right here. And let's paint in this one. Oh, I think uh, so Miss, I think it's Mrs. Blasted Monkey said that she, lo she likes that brush because it doesn't shed and it's got nice yeah. hairs on it. It's very fluffy. Yeah, when you see it and you're like, why is this thing so much money? What on earth? But the reason is, is that it absolutely doesn't shed and it guarantees your varnish. When you're varnishing, it's a huge deal because if anything goes wrong, it's really, it's really hard to reverse it. Yes. So you cannot have a shed. You cannot have a moment. It's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a purpose driven brush, not a place where you would cut corners. Right. And so you need a specific tool. There's the only reason I included it in the collection. Right. And and sometimes you just, you, it's good to have the right tool for the right job. Sometimes it's essential to have the right tool for the right job, man. It's just. No, there are other tools that will do that job too, but you know, right. just make sure you get the right one. So we've got this nice green here. I'm going to get my yellow just loaded on my brush and I'm going to come like right along here and I'm going to make that sort of little folded out yellow. Bring this through. Let that dry for just a second. I'm going to give my dark background a little go. And in this case, I'm going to make it kind of a chromatic sort of black. So what, I what think that, that I'm going to take my CAD red light and my phthalo blue. And chromatic means I don't use any black pigment. But I create a value that for all intents and purposes, as far as the eye is concerned, is nearly a black. However, I have to say that I like chromatic black sometimes because... Um, they keep the painting from uh, deading out and by not using a black pigment it then keeps even that space alive. Now, Pascal would like you to know that we are double Sherpa. We're double Sherpa! So, um, um, <laughs> oh yeah, this is not a beatbox show. <laughs> Uh, My yeah, friend the, Adam has one. It's yeah, really I, good. You I'm should not a, watch a, his for beatboxing. I, that's what I learned from my from my friend Adam. Boots and cats and boots and cats. That's what he taught me because he was like, oh, you're tragic. <laughs> oh, uh, beatbox television. That's if right. you're into beatbox battles and you've been like, where is that? There's not enough of that in my life. Those, that, that's where you would find it. <laughs> the next up uh, alumni with us. Yeah. For Cinnamon. <laughs> I got put in the group. I think that they didn't know, I, like, we don't know what you do, but it's weird YouTubing. <laughs> we so just kept like... doing it, and they kept coming showing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got to give this side its dark value. But do you see how that's a nice dark value, and the rose really pops from it, but it's not black? Yeah. That is cad red and thalo blue. Go figure. All right, guys? Go figure. They think trying. that was an that was an acceptable makeshift dance session. Was it? Yes. We're we, trying to get those back. Once we get the 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 audio 
back <sighs> a, now after made it con we're going to be doing the Big studio changes. stuff yeah we just we just couldn't do all of the stuff from made it con and there's stuff to reveal there there's neat stuff you being in an accident over the holidays really messed up our timetable you know man <laughs> Not for nothing. I'm not trying to make you feel bad or anything. I'm just saying, you know, head injuries are a bummer. They are. <laughs> they just not okay, man. Not okay. I'm gonna oh. go ahead and get a little of this yellow that has a tipped in green. I can even grab some white into it, and I'm gonna make sure that this particular sort of green and yellow petal is if I go there. edged in green and yellow. That one. That one. I was so like, it what? has some values, right? We want to have values. Yes. Good. Adam's family values. It sometimes. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. I don't know. They are good values. I think it was clearly you can tell I've been like in retro watching. Good those. people like the Adams family, don't you know? I don't know <laughs> that that's actually true. It's okay if you don't. We're not like, oh no, you don't like the Adams family. Ouch, you. Well, I, yeah, well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So I'm just improving some of the tonal tonalities on the petals so that we can really see the value differences that we have. I'm taking like my green and blending these out and just making sure that they are the beautiful, beautiful little spots that they should be. My water's pretty dirty, so it's a challenge at this point. Can you get me some new water? Um, you know what? I'm about to finish, so I think I'm going to just power through. All right. Did you guys get the idea? Right, I'm making a really light. I'm going to add a little magenta to my purple with the white because it's just such a nice color, and I'll get a little glaze in here. The reason is now that this is dry, if I glaze it, it will do a nice job. Oh, yeah. Okay, tuck this. And then just make sure that I've got a little bit of a tip petal here. All right, we're tipping the petal. I'm just trying to blend this with the stroke and the directionality in. Not, you know, there we go. Making sure I've got a little highlight as I come around. Like to have one of my tricks is I can take the pigment off and get the glaze, and then I can even soften the lines a little bit. If you guys have ever done that, because it's transparent, sometimes that'll give you a nice transition as well. If you've ever used it, if you don't have it, that can be harder, and you have to do it sort of wet into wet. And if that's the case, then you just come back with. You know, a little bit of your darker purple right here. And blend those back in together if you didn't have the glaze. Hmm. This is very interesting. Fatima says this reminds her of her middle school years in Russia. Really? Yeah, that's why I thought that was interesting. I was like, huh, I, that, that's... Listen, the, the I, Russian arts movement, it is wow. on, right? There's some, got them hopping stuff. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, they the the Russian art scene and is uh, going on right now. It's yeah. like, and guess what? Northern China our has brushes some stuff are here. in Romania. Mm -hmm. I'm just sorry. I'm just excited about that. There's yeah. There's just okay, so. Even if dude, you're an acrylic artist and you hate everything I do, go try the brushes because they are the bomb for acrylic paint. Now look, politics aside, whether you're acrylic or oil, we don't care. <laughs> we like everybody the same. <laughs> Yeah, I got no time for that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't keep up with the list on, you know, who the they thinks I should be mad at on any given week anyways. Uh, if, if, if. And I'm up for anybody that's going to give me cake, right? So. Two rules. Paint and support children. Yeah. Paint and support children. And then we're all good. Yeah. All right. I've got one last little thing I feel like I got to get into. I'm gonna get my glaze to do it, which is the quinacridone and the and the white, and I'm gonna just make sure that this petal 
has a lot of the same drama that the other petals have. You guys seeing that? Ooh. I'm just making sure that that highlight goes throughout. Okay, I'm pretty happy. That's really amazing. Now, where are you going to sign it? I have no idea. See, Give me yeah, seconds. This is, this is one of those things where this is an almost uh, an abstract. It's where... almost an abstract. So any way I sign it really determines how somebody hangs it, which I don't always like to do. So you're going to sign it on... on what, I'm going to try do? to hide it a little bit. See, now there's the guessing game of where does John point the camera? So here's what's crazy. I've just added a little bit of white to my chromatic black. Look what crazy color that gives me. Whoa. Not what you'd expect, is it? Unexpected Sherpa. Yeah, you know me. I like to sign in these weird places in kind of a muted way. All right, guys, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did, did it. it. We painted a rainbow rose. Yes, you the did it. And cats you and did it. And cats and you painted and cats. a rainbow rose. Oh, don't don't hate. <laughs> 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 I feel the internet hating. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, you can check the schedule for when the next class is. We've got Medicon coming up. Mm -hmm. um, so those will probably be drops if we get them in, which I'm hoping we will. And then we will be back to our same bat time, same bat channel. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.